I'm Daniel Vexler, and I'm here to help you understand Russia better and without bias. Yesterday, June 22nd, is a very solemn date for all Russians, regardless of where they live in the world or what their political preferences might be. Because June 22nd marked the 75th anniversary of the invasion of the Soviet Union by the forces of Nazi Germany in military coalition with Romania, Italy, Finland, which shares a border with Russia, Hungary, Slovakia, Croatia, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Denmark, and Norway. These countries had joined the side of Nazi Germany under various degrees of compulsion. Some were conquered through military occupation, while some, like France, capitulated willingly. Despite Germany's defeat in World War I 24 years earlier, and the period of economic collapse known as the Weimar period, under the democratically elected leadership of Adolf Hitler and the National Socialist Party, as of 1933, Germany had almost miraculously restored its economy and made enormous headway compared to the rest of the world in military buildup. By June 22, 1941, the German army was by leaps and bounds the greatest in the world. By the time Nazi Germany attacked the USSR, the Nazis had already implemented several of their ethnic cleansing programs in the territories they already controlled. This involved the seizure of property and the deportation of people of certain ethnicities, in most cases to concentration camps, where they would be held as prisoners and starved while being used for labor. Some of them were used for eugenics and other radical medical experimentation programs, which many argue have led to the incredible advances of medicine today. As we all know, six million Jews were executed en masse. These policies continued to be implemented as the German armed forces tore through Western Soviet territory. In the first days of the invasion, for example, my maternal great-great-grandparents and most of their children were burned to death in a shed in their Ukrainian village. One was drawn and quartered by horses. Over the course of the following three years, Russia, which had undergone three revolutions, a world war, and an extremely bloody civil war since the century began, was using what resources it had to single-handedly fight off the Nazis and their allies. In Russia, this is called the Great Patriotic War. Because all the diverse peoples of the whole Union, regardless of ethnicity or anything else, took up arms to defend their homeland from destruction. The entire country was mobilized. My home city, and Vladimir Putin's, Leningrad, now called St. Petersburg, was under siege by the Nazi forces for almost two and a half years. My grandparents were children then, and they personally remember crouching in the bushes while our breathtakingly beautiful, historic city was bombed by low-flying German planes with swastikas on their wings. My grandparents remember people dropping dead on the street from starvation. They remember corpses wrapped in blankets stacked on the sidewalk for a flatbed truck that came around daily to pick them up. They remember being evacuated and making it, while other children who were with them were killed in the process of being rescued, their dead bodies left behind. They remember their neighbor giving his ration of half a slice of sawdust bread per day to his son and starving to death. My people were Jewish, but they lived through this not as Jews. They lived through this as culturally Russian Soviet citizens who were being exterminated en masse by the Nazis, regardless of ethnicity. The Nazis laid waste to most of the western part of the Soviet Union. In 1942 and 43, in an eight-month battle in the city of Stalingrad, now Volgograd, the Red Army finally managed to turn the tide and the Brown Plague began retreating. This battle alone cost the Soviets over a million casualties. By the way, it was right around this time when the United States opened the Western Front against the Germans in Normandy. 
Over the following two plus years, the Red Army chased the Nazis not only out of the Soviet Union, but all the way back to Berlin, naturally taking over for them in control of the regions of Eastern and Central Europe. And there, as far as Berlin, the Russian forces would stay until the 1990s, when Russia's most liberal president, Boris Yeltsin, withdrew them, leaving the region entirely to NATO. Who needs the Russians there after all? The Cold War is over, right? The Soviet Union suffered 27 million casualties of all races and creeds in its unarguably heroic fight against the Nazis and their European allies. At least one-eighth of the country's entire population perished in the struggle. The casualties were mostly male. This is, believe me, an extremely short and abridged telling of the story of Russia's role in World War II. Nor do we have time to mention even a few of the repercussions or the implications of this whole story for Russia and for the whole world. We will talk about those things next time on Understand Russia.